everyone, and um, this is Miss Anna from the Elvisburg Branch, and welcome to Winter Book Talk, Winter YA Book Talk. Um, I'm the only one in here, so I'm going to take my mask off. Um, I'm going to recommend to you guys today um, a few young adult and some middle grade titles, because middle grade's been, like, really good lately. And all of them are going to have, like, kind of some read-in winter energies. Um, I will do some holiday books, but I'll save those for the end. So if you want some books that are specifically like Christmassy um, or holiday themed, um, those will be the last three I discuss. But before that, I'm just going to talk some books that I think are kind of wintry, um, fun fantasy stuff. Um, please take a moment to look at my whiteboard decorations because I think they're really cool. Um, I missed it all realizing that I've still got Halloween stuff up because I never took that down. No, oh, it's it's the ghost of Christmas past. Let's just go with that Christmas spiders. Anywho, so the first book I have to talk to you guys about is one that I recommended in an earlier video when we were all still back at home in quarantine. But every month has been five years long, so I recommend it again because it's a good book. But in wintertime, I like to read a lot of fantasy and a lot of like supernatural type books. So the first one I have to recommend to you is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This book is actually a retelling of Jane Eyre, but you do not have to know anything about Jane Eyre going in whatsoever. Like I had to read it for school, so like it's ingrained in my head forever. But if you don't have any knowledge, you're good to go. So essentially this book takes place in the early 1800s. And the main character is a young woman named Jane Eyre, who is a teacher at a um, boarding school for young girls where the abusive headmaster has just been murdered. And there's an organization that exists that takes place in England. And there's an organization who comes in from London, and they're essentially the pre-Victorian Ghostbusters. They're called in in order to look for ghosts and relocate them. And they've been called in to remove the ghost of the headmaster from this school. And Jane Eyre happens to be able to communicate with ghosts, which is a very rare ability. So she knows that when these people show up, they're going to try to recruit her to their cause, but she doesn't want to be recruited because her best friend is the ghost of her friend who died when they were younger in the school. So because she's friends with ghosts, she doesn't want to be in the business of removing them. So she decides to take a job as a governess for this mysterious wealthy man, um, which is where the plot of Jane Eyre comes in. And meanwhile, Jane's best friend, who is a fictionalized version of Charlotte Bronte, the author of the series, thinks that Jane is giving up this huge opportunity to progress in society by joining this ghost hunting society. So she decides to track Jane down with a member of the ghost hunters in order to convince her to join this group. And from there, um, I'm going to let you guys read the book. It is kind of a convoluted premise, but this book is really funny. It's got ghosts, but it's not scary. Like, it's not scary at all, um, which I think is, like, fun. I like reading the supernaturally stuff around the holidays, but nothing that's, like, ultra scary. But if you're looking for a book that has, like, a really unique premise, it's got some really, really funny lines. And it's a fun twist on a classic book where you don't have to have read the original. I highly recommend this one. The, the authors have written a whole series um, about women named Jane that's retellings. The first one is Jane Grey, who was a historical figure in the Renaissance, but in a universe where everyone can shift, shift into animals. And the third one, I haven't read it yet, but it's about Calamity Jane, who was a figure from the Old West, but with werewolves. And they are just really fun and unique, and I highly recommend them. The next book I have to recommend is another middle grade fantasy. Well, it's a middle grade fantasy, um, which again is not YA, but middle grade has gotten so good recently. And we actually don't have a print copy of this one in the library, but we do have the audio on Hoopla and it's fantastic. It is Breadcrumbs by Anne Ursu. It looks like this. And this book is a retelling of the Hans Christian Andersen story, The Snow Queen. Which, um, it's one of my favorite fairy tales. It's more of like a fairy tale novella. But the story follows a, um, young girl, the original Snow Queen story, follows a young girl who's traveling across this snowy forest in order to go find her best friend who has been stolen by the Snow Queen. And who is this mysterious wintry witch who lives in like a castle of snow and ice. It's very cool. Um, it has nothing to do with Frozen. Um, whatsoever. 
So a part of the Snow Queen story is that there's this magical mirror that shatters, and if someone has a piece of it in their eye, they can only see, like, negativity. They become, like, a very cruel and mean person. And so the main story follows a young girl named Hazel and her best friend Jack. And Jack gets a shard of this mirror in his eye, so he starts acting very cold towards Hazel. And she knows that something's wrong. Like, all the adults in her life just tell her that this is how people start to act when they grow up. But she knows that, like, something wrong is happening. So when Jack goes missing, she realizes she gets this instinct that she has to go search in this forest to find him. And from there, it becomes this retelling of the Snow Queen story. And it's actually kind of like a Hans Christian Andersen story cinematic universe. Like, you see references to all these different fairy tales that he wrote. And it's one of those children's fantasy books that's really hard to explain. Because, like, weird magic stuff happens, but none of it is explained in story. But it follows this young girl as she travels to this magical forest to find her friend and encounters all these, there's witches and magical creatures, and she encounters all these strange and magical people as she looks for her friend. And I'm repeating myself, so I'm going to cut off, but the writing in this book was phenomenal. It's just a really, really fun, imaginative fantasy story, and I highly recommend it if you listen to the audio. Uh, and I forgot to mention that we have My Plain Jane in both audio and in print format in the library. Audio is on Hoopla. The next book I have to recommend is another I talked about like a hundred years ago in the springtime, which again is like a decade ago, but it is a mystery series. It is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is what it looks like because we do not have a copy here today. Um, this is a series of three books. All are out and it's one of my favorite series ever. Um, the story follows two timelines. The first uh, is set in the 1930s, and it's about this wealthy family, this millionaire, who has recently opened a school for extremely gifted kids, for very gifted students. And right after he opens this school, his wife and daughter are abducted, a young daughter, and the daughter is never found, and the wife is found dead. And soon after that, the millionaire dies as well in an explosion. And this case has, was, is an infamous cold case. It has never been solved. No one knows what happened. And then we flash forward years into the future in the present day. There's a teenage girl named Stevie and she is extremely interested in true crime. She wants to be a detective and she is about to enroll in this school that was created by this millionaire in this up in the mountains in Vermont. And she is determined to be the person to solve this cold case and figure out what happened to this family and who committed the murders. And another really notable thing is that the only clue that they found in this case was a letter listing a series of methods of murder in a poem signed Truly Devious. And no one ever knows who Truly Devious was. So while Stevie is at this boarding school, a message from Truly Devious appears. And soon after that, a student is found dead. So you've got two murder mysteries, one in the 1930s and one in the present day. And it is so interesting. I'll warn you, you want to have all three books on hand because you don't get resolution in book one. And it was frustrating to wait a year. <laughs> um, and the reason I put this on the winter book talk is because book three has big winter energies. It has your classic mystery while snowed into mysterious place, which is one of the best genres. But the whole series is fantastic, great mystery. You want to go into it not knowing much. Good character writing as well. Very good representation of anxiety. I hi highly recommend this series. Definitely encourage you guys to check it out. I am going to pause this book talk to air a quick shout out to my mother because she ran by and dropped something off to me. And she knew I was filming this, so she brought me this great winter sweater and this cool book themed winter hat. And she got me Starbucks, which is awesome. So shout out to my mom. Everyone say thank you, Miss Anna's mom. Anywho, so the next book I have to recommend, this is another um, kind of wintry, this is a fantasy book that like nobody talks about. And it is a bit darker. This is like higher end YA, just because there's like some bloody stuff. But it's Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter. 
And this is based on a Russian fairy tale. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Baba Yaga stories, but in Russian folklore, Baba Yaga is a witch who lives in a house that walks around on giant chicken legs. And most of the time she's depicted as a villain, but sometimes she's like a helper figure. It kind of varies back and forth. But in this is a modern day version of this, where rather than a house on chicken legs, uh, Baba Yaga owns a convenience store on chicken legs and pretty much just kills any trespassers or shoplifters, leaves their bodies outside the giant convenience store on chicken legs. It's bizarro as heck, but it's great. Um, and the main character is a girl named Vasa who lives with her family in New York and they notice that nights are starting to become incredibly long. Like the sun just doesn't go up, time just kind of freezes. So Vasa is sent out by her family to go to Baba Yaga's convenience store in order to get light bulbs. And this is extremely dangerous because the witch often beheads shoplifters, but sometimes just innocent customers. So this could be an extremely dangerous mission. And she ends up becoming trapped in the store, but through various magical occurrences and tasks, um, she starts to be try and escape and survive through the night. And to explain much more is kind of spoilery. It's also been a hot minute since I read this book, but the writing is super good. It's not one of those great fantasy books where like weird crud happens, but not a bit of it is explained. Um, again, it is a bit dark. There's some blood in this. Um, it's, there's a couple of pretty brutal, bloody scenes, but other than that, if you're looking for something that's just really bizarre, but like very well written at the same time, and very unique for YA fantasy, it's not really, it doesn't hit your standard beats, this is definitely one that I highly recommend. So, staying on that like creepy winter book sense of things, and going back into some middle grade this is another book i've recommended but this is like one of my top favorite books of the year and i need to talk about it again i have small spaces by katherine arden and because this is a winter book talk i'm also going to talk about the sequel dead voices so small spaces follows a sixth grade girl named ollie who has recently lost her mother and she's still kind of working through the grief but one day, she finds a woman by a river about to throw away a book, and she's av Ali's an avid reader, and she just takes the book, steals the book from the woman because she doesn't want it thrown away, and starts reading this really creepy story, and starts reading this story about two men who are in love with the same woman and struck a deal with this mysterious figure named the Smiling Man, but. After reading this book, she goes to a farm on a field trip with her class and discovers that the farm is run by the same woman who was throwing away the book and is the place where the people from the story were buried. And on the way back, while well, on the school bus home, the bus stops and the teacher gets off, but the driver just turns around and tells them that they need to get off the bus, they need to go. And at the same time, Ollie gets a message on her digital watch that says to run. And... All, she, only Ollie, and two of her classmates follow this warning to get off the bus. And as they get off, the driver tells them to avoid small, avoid large spaces and stick to small. So they set off and then start hearing screaming coming from the school bus. And that's where I'm going to cut off because you want to know as little as possible going into this book. It is fantastic. It is genuinely scary, but it's like it's children's horror. So it's like bloodless horror. That's like the best kind of horror to me is like children's book horror because it has to rely on just being weird. Um, but the re the character relationships in this book are great. The three main characters have a great dynamic. Um, it's genuinely scary. And this is actually a very fallish book. because It's going to be a four book series, each one with a scary story in a different season. The second book, Dead Voices, is a ghost story that takes place in a snowed in ski lodge that may or may not be haunted. Um, around Christmas time, and I can't tell you much because it'll spoil book one, but it is also fantastic, genuinely scary, but like, like not so scary that me, the person who is extremely squeamish and doesn't do horror at all, can't do it. So if you're looking for like a series, they're also very quick reads. I read both of these within a week, and I'm a very slow reader. But if you're looking for a genuinely scary series that's also just extremely addictive, I highly recommend Small Spaces and Dead Voices. So 
So this next one I have to recommend to you is really not wintry at all. But um, I think that the holiday times when you're on winter break is a great time to start reading like fantasy books that are bricks and long series. That's when I get a lot of my long series done. Um, so I am the last person on earth in like the book world to read this, but it is fantastic. But I am going to recommend to you guys Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Uh, this is a fantastic book. Again, it's it's worth all the hype. It's a brick, but like it's very fast moving and the audiobook is on Hoopla and it's fantastic. Uh, this is a book that's set in a West African inspired fantasy world. And it's a world where magic used to exist, but all people who had magic were killed in this raid that went across the country because the king of this world hates magic for reasons you will find out in the book. And the children of the magic users were allowed to survive, but they have no access to their magic. It's completely blocked. So the main story follows a girl named Zili, whose mother was killed in this raid. And um, due to a series of occurrences that I don't want to spoil, she ends up meeting the daughter of the evil king, who has discovered that the king has come into possession of this scroll that can restore magic to the children of the magic users. And the princess has stolen the scroll and run away from the palace. And she and Zili end up running into each other, and they now must go on a quest in order to... Excuse my email pinging at me. Um, but she has to now go on a quest to take the scroll and find these other items that are needed to restore magic to the land in order to defeat this evil king. And this sounds like it hits a lot of the cliché fantasy beats, but it does it super well. It's a really unique setting for YA. You don't see a lot of um, African-inspired settings. It's becoming more common, which is a very good thing, I think. But I'm always excited to see like a fantasy world that isn't like medieval or Victorian Europe, just for the sake of variation. Um, but this is just, the writing is very good. The characters are very easy to become invested in. It's multiple POV, which I personally like. And the audiobook is fantastic. I'm about to start book two, and I can't wait to read it. So if you're looking to become invested in a series over winter break, this is a great one. So my next recommendation is a recommendation with a disclaimer. This is really odd. But I read this middle grade book over the weekend because I heard it got a lot of hype. And it was a fantastic, like, incredibly addictive, amazingly written book. And I need to disclaim that there is a lot of animal death in this book. Like, it's a talking animal book. And I personally do not do books with animal death in them at all. And I forgot that every talking animal book that's not for, like, easy chapter book readers or younger is messed the heck up. But I recently read Scary Stories for Young Foxes by Christian McKay Heidecker. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And it was amazing. But please be warned, this is a book about talking foxes, and a lot of talking foxes die in this book. So big, big, big content warning for animal death. But if you want a story that is just really intense and gripping, I highly recommend it. So the story as a framing device with a litter of young fox kits go to see the storyteller fox and they want to hear scary stories. So the storyteller fox tells the series of stories about two young foxes who for spoilery reasons have become separated from their families. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> um, but these two young foxes both become separated from their families and experience all these really like scary events that happen to them before they meet one another and they kind of band together to survive and form this great relationship. It's so I'll just say it that I started reading this book and suddenly the only thing that mattered to me in the world was the well-being of these two fictional baby foxes. Like, I could not put it down. I had to know what was going to happen to these fictional baby foxes. And while I was reading the book, it just hit me like a truck. Like, it is a good book. It is intense. It's genuinely scary. But when the heartwarming moments hit, they hit you like a truck. Like, it is... This is the most bizarre book recommendation I've ever done. But I, I swear it's a good book. Um, the stories 
are I thought they were going to be like ghost stories, but they're more like things that would be actually scary to a realistic, realistic, but to a fox in the wild. It's predator animals and um, humans who are hunting and like just surviving in nature. But the dynamic between the two main foxes is so good. It I promise you the ending is worth it. Um, if you like stories that are genuinely kind of scary, um, if you like stories that like get you really deeply invested in the characters, I highly recommend this. This was a fantastic book. Just please be warned that in the grand tradition of middle grade talking animal books, it is dark. But I highly recommend Scary Stories for Young Foxes, even though this was the most bizarro book talk I've ever given. That's not all. So you may have noticed that I have changed into my holiday outfit. I've got the sweater that says Dachshund Through the Snow on it. And it has a Dachshund wearing a sweater on it. And I just think that's great. I've got a Dachshund at home. So like, obviously I have lots of Dachshunds on it. Which is always fun. But I have changed into my holiday outfit because now it's time to talk about three books that have a definite like holiday theme to them. Um, most of them are Christmassy. Um, and I want to save this for the end part of the video, so if you just want one tree books, uh, those are some that I recommend. But now we're going to go into some holiday specific ones. And the first one I have here is my favorite seasonal book. It is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. It looks like this. And this is a young adult Christmas carol retelling, but not necessarily in the way that you think it would be. So the premise of this book is that there's this magical organization that has branches all over the world, largely made up of ghosts. And every year they pick someone to be the designated Scrooge. And this is usually a wealthy, like miserly, horrible person who treats people terribly. And throughout the year, this organization researches this person and like every aspect of their life and their history. And they appoint different people in their lives as the characters in the Christmas Carol story. Like there's always a Bob Cratchit, who is someone who is under the power of the Scrooge, um, who is treated badly, but they can learn a lesson from. And there's always a person who had a positive in influence. There's always a person who has deceased and acts as the Marley's ghost, um, who represents like who they could become if they continue in their negative ways. And then after doing all this research, this organization goes out on Christmas Eve and pretty much reenacts Christmas Carol with the yearly Scrooge in order to encourage them to reform and change their ways. And it usually works that the person wakes up on Christmas morning and they decide to become a better person and the world is better off for it. And one year, uh, the designated Scrooge is a teenage girl named Holly Chase. And she's a spoiled, horrible, like wealthy girl who doesn't care about anyone but herself. And on Christmas Eve, the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future come to her and show her that if she continues in her ways, it will result in all sorts of terrible things and her own death. And she wakes up Christmas morning, but rather than reform, she continues in her ways and dies as a result. But then she be, this organization recruits her to become the new ghost of Christmas past. So she now has to work for this organization and is assigned to research the next Scrooge, which happens to be a young man about her age. And to go into much more is spoilers, because I kind of rambled on and on about it, but you follow this character, and she's the new ghost of Christmas past. And I went into this thinking it was gonna be like your, you know, your standard hokey cheesy um, Hallmark romance movie. And I got a really clever and fun book with really cool world building. And I just think that's really fun. It's a moving story, but it's also kind of funny. It's got fun elements to it. It does a really cool spin on the Christmas Carol story. It's not like your standard retelling. And if you're looking for something that's like holiday themed, but really uplifting and very creative, I highly recommend The Afterlife of Holly Chase. This is also one of the same authors who wrote um, My Plain Jane, which I talked about earlier. Um, we have the book in the library, and you can also get the audio and an ebook on Hoopla. The next one is one that I don't have physically, but we have the audiobook on Hoopla, and I've seen the book in our circulation. But it's 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This is what it looks like. 
This is a young adult contemporary um, set during the holidays. And if you're like me, you really like the really cheesy, like Netflix romantic comedies that come out around Christmas. And this is kind of sort of the young adult equivalent to one of those. Um, not quite, like not quite to the level of like cheesy Hallmark movies. There goes my email pinging again. But this is a 10 blind dates is a story that follows a teenage girl who has recently broken up with her boyfriend right before the holidays. And every year she has this huge extended family and every year they all gather at her grandmother's house for Christmas. And for the first year, her parents have gone to travel somewhere. So she's going alone to the grandmother's house. So she's with all of her relatives and they all like, find out about this breakup. So all of the family members decide that everyone gets to set this girl up on 10 blind dates between Christmas and New Year's. And she has to go on each of them. And the family even sets up like a betting pool about how soon she'll come back from each date. So the story follows her as she goes on 10 blind dates, each set up by a different member of the family. And you get to go see each of these dates. And it's really fun. It's funny. It's very cute. And of course, there is a romance with another person involved. I won't tell you if it's one of the 10 dates or not. Just spoilers. Um, not like it's it's pretty easy to figure out when you start reading it, but like, what do you expect? It's a Christmas romantic comedy. That's what it's for. Um, but this is a really cute book. The best part is actually the family dynamic because you have this character with a huge extended family and it's just really sweet and uplifting. You get this great like dynamic between all these relatives. It's really fun to read. So if you're looking for a really like sweet, fun romantic comedy, something that's really light and happy, this is a really good one, 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. And the last book I have to recommend to you all is a short story collection. It's one I've read a couple of times, it's really fun. It's called My True Love Gave to Me, 12 Holiday Stories. It's edited by Stephanie Perkins, but it's got all these YA authors in it. You've got a lot of famous ones. You've got Holly Black, David Levithan, Rainbow Rowell. There's a lot of really, really popular ones in here. And this is just a collection of 12 winter holiday themed stories. Um, not all of them are Christmas. There's some other holidays mixed in there. And there's all sorts of genres. There's some fantasy stuff. It's mostly contemporary romance, but there are some fantasy stories. And I love this book. It's super cute. All of the short stories are very good. Um, I'm trying to remember some of them. But I don't want to spoil much because it's fun to just go into this. Um, but there's some really great stories in here. There's a fantasy story about this girl who goes to her eccentric relatives every holiday season. And over her life meets this cursed young man every year in the garden. And some interesting stuff comes out of that. There's a really cute romance that takes place on a Christmas tree farm. And there's actually a sequel to this book that's all summer stories. And that particular story has like a sequel story in there. Um. There's some, there's a New Year's story by Rainbow Rowell that's actually been included in a couple of other collections, I think. Um, I won't go into this much because it's fun to just read. I think the first time I read this, I like read a story a day in the lazy days leading up to Christmas. And that was a fun way to go about it, like a book advent calendar. But if you want something that's a quick read, lots of short stories, a lot of variation, different genres, this is a really cute one. So that's going to about wrap up the um, winter slash holiday book talk. I hope you all had fun with this video, listening to me ramble about books and fun outfits. Um, if you have any questions about this, the books, you can email me at ajohns at car.org. Um, if you've read any of them, if you have any other recommendations for everybody, feel free to put them in the comments of the Facebook post that goes with this video. Um, thank you for sticking out with me this long because I imagine this video has gotten kind of longish. Um, ignore the sound of the 3D printer in the background because I just realized how loud that is. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a great winter season. Have a great holiday season. This is going to come out in like the second week of December, I think. So it will be like, yay, holidays. Um, yeah, it is mid-November as I film this. Um, but I hope you all have a great one and have a good day. Bye.